Hi there, uh, my name is Serge Bodrov. I'm the product development lead at Quarantine. Today, I will tell you a fairy tale for software developers. There will be magical tricks, heroic deeds, and astonishing accomplishments. Not a single line of code will be written today. You will not believe your own eyes. Here's how it goes. Uh, I have a product inventory database schema in front of me. Products through supplier ID and category ID provide a no normalized storage of inventory data. The data in products table can be seen on this screen. Here is what I have in suppliers. And this is the view of categories. Notice that categories, uh, even though it's a simple table, we do have some binary data there, which will help us to demonstrate some additional features of what we'll accomplish with current time app generator. So let's go straight to the app generator now. And what I'll do is this. First, I will build an online application for the database that we were looking at a moment ago. This app will work in any modern web browser, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Microsoft Edge. Next, with a bit of magic, I will turn this application into a native app that works in offline, disconnected mode on mobile devices powered by iOS, macOS, Android, and Windows. Let's begin. My app will be called Hello Offline. The default settings of the project will be sufficient to build a single app that works both in, in online and offline disconnected mode. And the highlights here are page implementation, single page HTML apps in HTML format for pages, and the user interface is touch UI. The very first step requires us to set up a connection to our data source. So data provider that I will use is SQL Server. And I do that since I'm using SQL Express and I already have the Norseman database sample. So the data we were looking at is from the database. You can also make apps for Oracle, MySQL and MariaDB, DB2, SQL Anywhere, Postgres, SQL, and Firebird. Specific connection settings can be configured here, right here. I'll type the name of my server. And we'll type up the name of the database. Northwind Test Drive. That's what I call it. Test. All right. Test connection succeeded. Let's move on. Uh, the next step for, for me is to choose what I'm working with in this application. So I'm required to define several models to help the app generator to create the infrastructure and uh, various components. And what I'll do here is this. I will create a model for products table. So what I see above is a, is a model represented by a collection of fields and what I see below the divider is sort of a diagram. The blue table is a base table of my model product. And I can see categories. Categories contribute category name. And a category name will be used whenever category is referenced. Uh, company name complements supplier ID. And you can also include extra columns if you need to, like country and phone for the supplier. Uh, generally, uh, consider setting up a sort expression, sort type, or sort order for your application. So I'll do that, a setting order for product name. We'll save that. App Generator suggests two more models. One of them will be categories. Uh, let me type up the sort expression here, or maybe sort order, sort order one. Uh, so I'll take every single column from the categories into the model. We'll save. And I will also create suppliers model. Uh, sort type is ascending. 
on the company name. If you change your diagram or include extra things in there, this will not affect your actual database. You're only changing the logical configuration of your app. So, for example, I take out the home page, and this should not affect my application in any way, my database in any way, but it will have effect on my app. Save. So I have three models. Uh, the follow-up steps will uh, require additional parameters that I can configure. I will skip them, and at some point I'll reach a summary of what will be created in our application. And the summary includes the data controllers that will be generated by the app builder. Categories, product suppliers, that's what we're working with. Each of these uh, controllers will be uh, having a corresponding page with the same name. I, will, I can customize my app in Designer, but right now I will just generate and we'll take a look around in there. So remember, we're building online app and this app will turn into an offline application. So we're getting there. So stay, stay with me and let's proceed. All right, so the app will come up in the default web browser. I am using Microsoft Windows 10, so I see Microsoft Edge come up. Uh, the home page shows me a sitemap. I can go to products. Here's a list of products. You can look at the products under a different angle. Here's a list of products. Here's a list of like a collection of cards representing products. Uh, I can even see my products in the form of charts. The charts are created by uh, the app automatically. The app finds that there are, there are foreign keys and therefore suggests several charts for me. All right, I'll go back to the greed list, greed presentation. Uh, categories. So what do we have with categories? It's a list of categories. We can look at them in, in a cars form to get them all visible to us. And we have suppliers. Suppliers are, well, displayed in a very much similar way to the products. There is only there is also one additional view style called map. So let's see what happens here. So when I choose this view style, I can see how uh, uh, little uh, pins drop on my car on my my map here. So I click Bigfoot Breweries uh, location, rather supplier uh, in the United States. And if I click on the card, I will see properties of the supplier. So naturally, Bigfoot Breweries supplies some products in our database. So let's verify that. So go to products. And if I click on supplier comp company name, I'll see Bigfoot Breweries. I'll select that name and we'll apply a filter. There's three, three suppliers. Well, how about we customize our app and make suppliers, rather products, the visible to us here, uh, become a part of the presentation for the supplier. So we'll stick them somewhere in here. So let's, let's do that. Uh, go back to the app generator and select your project. In there, activate designer, click design. In the designer, select suppliers page switch to controllers, and then take products and drop, drag them onto suppliers node in, on the right-hand side of the designer. So this will create products data view field. So the data controller called suppliers, which was derived from the model based on the visual diagram we worked with. Um, uh, so here I have a new special field created automatically when I drop products onto suppliers. You can drop products data view field onto create form one. Then you can do the same for edit form one. One extra customization step that I will perform is moving products just above the address. The fact that I have page supplier selected will display that page when I browse my app from the designer. The app comes up. Here is my Bigfoot Breweries. I'll click on it. And there will be a change to our application. You can see that Bigfoot Breweries displays a list of products. These three products that we were looking at uh, previously, it's exactly the same information, right? Okay, so that works. So let's make a similar change to categories. I want to pick a category and I want to see a list of relevant products. Go back to current time, uh, right click products, click copy, paste into categories. This is an equivalent action to having 
uh, to execute in drag and drop. So what I did now is not what I intended. In fact, I dropped controller on the page called categories. I don't want to do that. I was going to do this on the controllers tab. So let me do, repeat this exercise. I will collapse suppliers. We'll grab products, or rather right-click products, click copy, paste them onto, onto categories, and then you see a data view field called products in the list of fields of categories. Uh, and uh, if you were to investigate the properties of this data view field, you will notice that uh, there is a filter, field one, called category ID, which is available in the products. Uh, the app will link data, or rather filter data, by uh, making sure that the records visible to the user will uh, match to the primary key of the selected record. So if you pick a category, you, only, you will only see the matching products. So put products onto create form one, put them on edit form one. Browse, uh, we'll see page called home, uh, and what I will do now, I'll click on categories, and I will choose confections. When I do that, I see a list of products right there. So we have 13 products in the category confection. And we can see that there are five products in the category called produce. Yeah, everybody likes sweets, nobody likes produce. Okay, so, what we have here is a quite a complicated app. We've done very little to make it complete. And you can agree, most likely you will agree, that this app is sufficient to produce, uh, to perform data management for the inventory. If you want to put your app online, you probably want to make one more customization. Most likely you would like to protect your data. So if people know the URL of your app, you would know their identity. Knowing user's identity may help you to filter data. So for example, you may limit access to certain categories to certain, for certain users. Uh, you may limit uh, customers to seeing their orders uh, and so on and so forth. So at this point, I'll just introduce a security system so we'll know who the users are. Go back to cut on time, exit project designer and click on settings. Click on database connection, and let's revisit the properties of the connection string. There, you will see that uh, a section called membership uh, is providing us with three buttons. One will tell us if you have membership system in your application. I'll click on this button. I do not have the system. Uh, click add to introduce uh, tables designed by Microsoft call that will help. Those tables will help you manage users' roles and the relationships of users and roles. Application Generator will also produce a membership management tool for you. So if I click OK, click Next, and proceed to the table called, to the page called, section called Authentication and Membership, you, that will be a checkbox pre-selected for me. If you do not want to use tables designed by someone else, but prefer to use your own tables, users and roles, you can activate custom membership. For that purpose, you can also use Active Directory to obtain users from your Active Directory domain. If you have custom membership or ASP.NET membership, you can also activate Open Authentication and use Microsoft Graph to obtain users and roles from your Office 365 account or Microsoft Azure Active Directory. You can also integrate with Google Apps if you this is your choice of users and roles and in general infrastructure in your business. I'll click Finish. This will get me straight to the summary of the data controllers. My database has changed. I clicked uh, on this Add button, and now I have extra tables in my database. So I need to click Refresh and tell the app generator that there are changes. OK, so the app generator will look inside of the database, will find all the new stuff and new settings. And you will now see that I have a new item on my summary of data controllers that, that is called My Profile. So my profile provides your application with a facility to help users sign in, sign up for an account, recover their password, uh, or to look at the account settings when they sign in. So this is exactly what I want. So I'll click Generate. And at this point in time, application will display in a slightly different fashion. We will see much less. 
when we see that pop up in the browser. And to get more, we'll have to sign in. So right now I see a splash screen and I can only access homepage. I need to identify myself. And there are two accounts. One is called admin and the other one is called user. So these accounts are automatically created. You can disable this and you know prevent users from signing in with the default accounts. But for now, it works perfectly well. So we click login. I'll type up my name, admin, admin123%. And when I click login, I will see products. I will see categories. I will see suppliers. Also, I'll see membership. Uh, I am administrator since I signed in as admin. And the only difference of admin and, and user account is this particular page on the membership page you can use membership manager to create users and manage roles two roles available administrators and users all right so we're good our app is running well on my computer you can see that i i can sign in identify myself and access data change whatever i want to change uh, basically i am now having a facility to manage inventory and what i could do i could go to cut on time uh, click on my project and say publish. This will give me access uh, to publishing features of the app. You can choose uh, Microsoft Azure, for example, and have your app running in a few minutes on the web, uh, given that your database is in the cloud. Well, my database is on my local computer, so I'm not going to do that. So we'll consider my local app to be that published app. All right, so we'll cancel that. And what I'd like to do now, I would like to proceed and uh, get myself one more step closer to running this online application we have developed on a mobile device, maybe iPad or Android phone. Okay, what options do I have? Um, you may have heard that mobile development is complicated and it's true. If you want to build native apps, one option is to use uh, corresponding development tools for each platform. And this is probably the best option if you have plenty of time and money. Uh, for example, if you want to write apps for iOS, you would use Swift or Objective-C. If you want to write apps for Android, you would write either in Kotlin or Java. Uh, maybe you have uh, a certain allegiance with Microsoft and you could, you could use Xamarin technology from Microsoft and write your applications in C-Sharp or Visual Basic and then publish them to the iOS or Android platform uh, as needed. One problem with this approach is that you need to write for each individual platform a new app. I don't want to do that. There is also another option. Uh, you, you can create hybrid applications based on HTML and JavaScript. Hybrid applications generally uh, are written with some HTML framework, a JavaScript framework, uh, popular at the moment. And you provide your app with a web view, with a play, with a native application with minimal capabilities that loads up your local HTML pages uh, and display a user interface of your app to the end user. Such app is relatively easy to port to multiple platforms, and there are tools such as PhoneGap that help you do that. You can limit yourself to HTML and JavaScript and use PhoneGap uh, from Adobe to move uh, your app or make it available on other platforms. Typically, this local HTML pages and JavaScript will make requests to a remote server. So, for example, you can go to your current time app, activate Designer, and turn on uh, for example, for product controller, uh, REST API. REST API will be enabled like this. You would say URI dot. URI means the unifying resource identifier for the this particular resource in your app. And you can say however you access however this app is accessed, that's allowed. So you can say okay and browse. Your URI uh, will the resource you will use to access application will help you to identify uh, objects you want to get access to. So I'll log out here and we'll go to this new tab. We'll paste the page that I had there before and we'll type up app services products. So this targets my data controller called products. The fact that I have enabled 
any type of URI and or the, or for data access will give me data presented to me uh, and I'll have to identify myself. In this case, I'm admin, admin123%. And when I click OK and sign, sign up with the correct password, I see data rendered in XML format. If you use uh, native code or any other code to do a similar action, you would make an HTTP request and the data will come by default in a JSON format. Uh, you can use filters, perform other functions there. Uh, for example, you could say, I'd like to get a category name called confections. And this will give you a subset of records. You will get 13 items not the entire set of products. Again, I have no desire to work with either XML or JSON, and it's quite complicated, and I certainly don't want to write any custom HTML, making remote calls, and integrating this HTML into other platforms. It takes a long time. So the point is, whether you choose native application development pathway to being getting you up on the, on the platform of choice, or you use hybrid applications, you will have to spend a lot of time. You can use uh, some automation tools such as Code on Time to create the backend for your uh, data processing, but it takes a lot of time and, and money. As I mentioned, no desire to write code today, and that's what I'd like to f stick with. I want to point out that our app looks very much like a native application already. So for example, let me sign in back and up. Uh, if I take this, let me close all the other tabs. If I take this up, make it a little smaller, we'll just stick it to the right side of my screen. You will notice that if I go to products and pick a product, the application shows me a full screen presentation. The pages sort of slide in and out as I navigate. If I were to remove somehow that address bar and just you know leave the bottom of the app, that would be perfect. Look, my app works in the web browser on a larger device and showed me model pages. Right? You have nice UI there uh, to perform various actions. So how do I get it done? Well, we need to come up with a way to get this HTML and JavaScript components of our app and put it on the device. How do we do that? Now, first of all, there is already a solution we, that was developed here at Cut on Time, and we call it Cloud on Time. Cloud on Time app exists for iOS, macOS, Windows, and Android platform. This app is free. You can use it to test native mode execution for your applications, or you can use it in production environment if necessary. I can get this up directly from Microsoft Store on my computer. I'm using Microsoft Windows, so I'll go to Microsoft.com. And there, I will click on the search and we'll type up Cloud on Time. So Cloud on Time app comes up. I'll just click on it. When I get there, you'll see that uh, you have Install Open button. Click on that button and you will go to the App Store from Microsoft. In the App Store, you will have a feature to launch your app. I have it installed, this app installed already, so I don't need to, to go through the step. It takes a few moments. You can do exactly the same on your device and get Cloud on Time for iOS, Android, or Windows on, on any device that you own. Cloud on Time app looks like this. Let me show it to you. So you can see that I used this app before, and uh, what it shows us in the user interface where I can see a collection of connected clouds. And my collection is empty. There is nothing there. Uh, connect button will give you a way to connect to your remote application. You can type up the URL of your app, and what Cloud on Time app will do, it will transfer the front end components of your application to the device. It will also launch a web view that will load local HTML pages. And the local HTML pages will make requests to your application server, your application on the web. 
You can also launch uh, Cloud on Time in development mode directly from, from the app generator. So let me show you how it works. And uh, just before I do that, I will want to highlight the user interface components of my app. So I'll click on Open button here, and you see uh, the File Explorer. So I'll go to App Folder, and folder is called CSS, Fonts, Images, JS, and Pages will be downloaded to the local storage of the device if you connect Cloud on Time to your app. And here I have my HTML pages. Okay. To make Cloud on Time launch Cloud on Time up on your device and to debug in native mode or preview results of your customization, exit designer, click on settings and click on client and server button here. So this will get us to the corresponding configuration sections of the section of the app. So you can see that in the client portion of the app, I, I can set up uh, uh, and these settings are default. I can set up my app to start as soon as it's generated and you can launch it in a web browser. You can also launch it in a generic app. When you choose generic app, you'll get two, two choices, uh, Chrome Embedded Framework generic app and Universal Windows Platform app. I am using Windows 10, so I'll stick with Cloud on Time for uh, Universal Windows Platform. Click Finish. And uh, the next time you generate your app, Cloud on Time app will start and will get displayed to us. It will connect to your application and will download the front end of it to the device. So let's see how that works. You can see Cloud on Time app started. It waits for my application to become available. Uh, after code generation, and in a few seconds, it will get displayed. All right, there you go. So what you see now, uh, uh, it's clearly not a web browser. You can see the name of the app. It's called Cloud on Time. We are on the start page of Hello Offline app. Um, we are working with the development version of this app. If you see dev, that means you are connected to a local host version of your application. So what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm suggested to log in to authorize access on this device. I'm actually looking at the web version of our application, the, this particular application that we see here. So it's essentially, uh, if I log out, uh, this is the page I'm looking at. So I'm seeing this username and password confirmation. There's no remember me button, but I need to identify myself. So that's exactly what I'm looking at when, I, when I'm in Cloud on Time App right now. So when you type up your name and password, app will try, your app will try to authenticate you. And if your identity was confirmed, then Cloud on Time app will obtain access token representing your identity from the app and the renewal token. So these two tokens will be used by Cloud on Time app when making web requests from the device to your application. My app runs on a local host computer, so it's the same computer. But from Cloud on Time perspective, it's as good as having you up running elsewhere on a custom domain somewhere on the web. Uh, so when I click login, the following will occur. Application will quickly download the front end components of the app, and I will see uh, how the, the actual data loaded in the local pages. So let's see what happens now. Login. My password is wrong, so let me do the right password. Only if my password is correct, you see pages are downloading. Uh, the app will pop up in the Cloud on Time. So now I have an alternative to my browser. It's a Cloud on Time app, and it looks very much like my my app when it's loaded in the browser. With the only difference is that the home page, products, category, suppliers, and membership pages are HTML pages stored on the device. They are not being retrieved from the web from the server when I click on products. This is a local page. So part of my application is already on my device. And if you remember, we're building an offline application in the end of this exercise. So we're already halfway there. So the front end of the app is already on the device. Uh, and only when I click on records or you know, when I, when the application needs data, that's when it goes and makes request to the server. All right. Now we'll begin with some magic here. Before we proceed, I just want to mention one fact. That, uh, so if you prefer to have some branded or white label version of your application, if you want to have your own brand in app stores, you can always 
uh, count on us to get it done for you. Uh, so we'll be offering uh, in the very near future white label versions of Cloud on Time Up on all platforms that we support. And you'll be able to go to our uh, mycloudontime.com website. This is a site where you signed up for, for the free trial or where you register your activation code. And you'll be able to uh, request a custom version for your own application. So Cloud on Time Up can connect to multiple applications. Uh, it offers exit option in every app when you click on the user account. Exit gives you access to all applications connected to Cloud on Time. So white label version of your app does not have access to this page. Instead, the URLs of your app are hard coded into the implementation of your white label version. You have your own color schema, you have your own branding, and you call your app whatever you want to call it. For example, Hello Offline if you choose so. So this app knows where your server is and goes straight to it to get data. All right. At the very next step of uh, configura application configuration, I'll go back to current time and we'll uh, start preparing my app to run in offline mode. One more uh, remark I would like to make is uh, about the data input modes in offline and native apps. Uh, and I'll compare it to the online apps. By default, your online application, be it a web browser or when you run your online app in Cloud on Time, you have access to uh, your data and you have data input mode that we may be called pass-through mode. And let's say I, I want to create a supplier. We'll click on plus and we'll say A here. Uh, I have added products to my supplier's data controller, but I don't see suppliers here. If I click save, then the form opens up, a uh, form called edit form one, application inserted supplier A in a database and offered me a way to input my data. I can create a product here called P1. Uh, put some information and save. What I don't have is this. I don't have an ability for to undo this action because every action I execute, every time it, it successfully goes through, uh, it means that uh, my data was persisted in the database. And this mode of operation is, is good, but what if you want to cancel your changes? Well, you say close, and you can't really undo what you did. You simply dismiss the screen. Your supplier is there. So if you delete product P1, it will go from the database. If you change your mind and made it by mistake, you cannot undo this operation. Uh, well, I can delete supplier, but uh, this mode of operation works well, again, if you have the need to ensure that every single small action is successful. Uh, in offline mode of our application operation, we enhance your input mode and make it transactional. So let me show you how that works. To further prepare my app for offline execution, I will click on the project name, we'll activate designer, and we'll visit pages, product, categories, and suppliers. And for each page, I'll mark offline checkbox. And we'll say, OK. Next, I'll click on categories. We'll do the same, and I will do the same exact action on suppliers. If you were to access your app in a web browser uh, or Cloud on Time App, which will happen this, this, this very moment, you will notice that data input is changed on offline pages. So let's create a new supplier. Plus, notice that we have products available to us for data input. So if I type up A and I proceed to you know, create a product, P1, maybe put a few, uh, like make another one, P2, and get some different price here and save this record. Uh, I do have one supplier and two products already displayed to me in the form. But if I were to go to, to the browser and identify myself and look at my data and go to the products page, I will not see P1 and P2 in the database. L, M, N, O, P. So yeah, there's no P1 and P2. So how so? So this data exists only in the memory of my, in this form, on this particular app. And it will be exactly the same if you do this action in the web browser, when you access your app through, through any major web browser. If I were to say cancel, 
I will be offered to discard my changes. And if I do so, then P1 and P2 will go away. If I stay put and save, then application will send three records, supplier and both products, and will start database transaction. Make sure that three actions go through and then commit this transaction. So offline uh, pages enable this uh, quite nice and logical data input mode. Uh, the same will be the case if you delete records. Let's say I take out my products and I don't want to keep them uh, this time around. If I say cancel, I will undo my action. I, P1 and P2 are not lost until I actually save the master record. So if I save the master record, transaction with delete instructions for two products it went to the database. Uh, and now if I go and refresh my products here, or other suppliers here, and click on A, I will see there are no products. So go back to the app, uh, delete A, All right, it's gone. All right, so this is what we call transactional data input. The last step to turn your application into a truly offline app is to bring data stored in the database to the device. So we already established that Hello Offline app running the cloud on time uses copy, copies of HTML, JavaScript, and, and everything else you have in your online app and does not really need them. All it needs is the ability of your app to provide data. I will go to the settings of my app and will enable an add-on called Offline Sync. So I'll click on Settings. We'll choose Features, and in the Features, I will select Add-ons. Here's, uh, here's an Offline Sync add-on. I'll click on it, and this will enable your licenses or license, if you have how many licenses you have. If you don't have a license for Offline Sync, you will see a link explaining how to get it. So I'll say finish, and we'll simply generate my app. Cloud on Time will download any changes to the application and then immediately proceed to download data, and you'll see it in a moment. So the front end hasn't been changed. Application starts up, and now you can see my uh, that Offline Sync takes action. It downloads and products, categories, suppliers, downloads pictures of categories. All this data comes to the device. At this point in time, I can literally disconnect from my application on the server and uh, you know input some data. So I have suppliers stored locally. I have categories on my device, and I have products also on my device. How do you know that you're working in an offline mode? There is a icon here. It show, looks like a cloud and it shows the check mark. It tells you that you're synchronized. If you have a check mark and there are no changes uh, that needs to be uploaded from your app to the server. Uh, so let's try an input one supplier here. So I'll go ahead and click on plus. We'll click A, uh, type up A for the name and we'll type up uh, USA for country and the phone number for the phone. I do have access to my products right away. I can add them up as I create my supplier. So I'll say P1. We'll type up condiments and we'll say 10 per box. Put some price in there. And we'll click Save and New. I'll type in P2, C, and I'll type up C1. So there is no such category. I'll click Enter. And you can see that this category is saved. We'll type up a different price, some quantity. We'll click Save and New. As soon as I type C in the categories, I will see my new category, C1. And I'll just proceed to identify confections for this product. And we'll put some price again and the quantity. And when I click Save, we have a supplier with three products. If you choose any of these products and change the price, that will work as well. Yeah, I will modify those. If I were to cancel my changes, then these changes will not be persisted in the local copy of data that is available to Cloud and Time App on this device. If I click Save, data will be persisted. You can see that I have 
uh, supplier A, if I click on it, you will see a full recall of what was centered. And you will notice that the cloud icon has changed to arrow up. It says that I have pending changes. If I click on it, there will be a suggestion that I, well, I was, first of all, I learned that I synchronized last time, two minutes ago, and I have one pending change. What is this pending change? This one pending change includes supplier A, P1, new category C1, P2, and P3. So all this, this five actually records will be created as a single sort of logical step. If you go to categories, here's your category. Now let's put something here. So let's upload a picture for the category. I'll get some bread here and let's create another product. Why not? So I'll enable inline editing. We'll proceed to get us some product. So P4. And we'll type up Bigfoot Breweries. I'll put some uh, price in here. And we'll save. So here we have a Bigfoot Breweries supplying us P2, P4. If I were to cancel, then the picture will not be saved. It will not be assigned to the category. Uh, and P4 will go away. If I click Save, picture will be assigned to the category and we'll, we'll have another change. We'll have a P4 associated with C1. Let me actually change price on the P2 as well. So we'll make it into 21 cents. So we'll save. And there you go. So we have now three changes. First change, as I already mentioned, is supplier. Second change are two changes to products of C1, uh, the new product that I have inserted, and the change in price, that's change number two. Change number three, the picture which was assigned to C1. So larger objects are not submitted with data and count as a separate change. So this helps in a synchronization of data in effective fashion. Let's go back to our online app. So what's going on there? So click on suppliers. Uh, well, there's no supplier A. Click on categories. There's no bread there. Uh, and let's go to products. No P1, P2, P4, P3 in the list. Yep, not there. So if you go back to current time, uh, whatever page you look at and uh, activate sync icon, you can actually push changes from your application uh, running locally to the cloud, to my local host cloud. And you can also make application uh, perform automatic refresh. So both up new fresh changes to your app will get downloaded and the data will be um, refreshed. What if you lose your connection? So let's try and lose connection. I'll activate Wi-Fi settings on my device uh, and uh, watch what happens when I turn off Wi-Fi. So I have right now access to home, products, categories, suppliers, and membership. As soon as I turn it off, products, categories, and suppliers are the only pages available to me. That's because I cannot access data anymore. Uh, I cannot access online pages anymore. And those pages that disappeared are not available to me. If I click on suppliers, I can still work with those suppliers, right? I don't need the online server. As soon as I turn it back, in a few moments, uh, a Wi-Fi connection will be established. And uh, you will see that I can access now those pages. See, and the menu refreshes itself automatically. So your application is aware of the state of, uh, of the internet online connection and uh, you know, turns on and hides the pages that you cannot access at the given moment. All right, so let's do the synchronization. I uh, will turn off refreshing and we'll only upload changes. Let's see how long it takes. Synchronize. Offline sync will upload a small amount of data and then we're done. That's it. So I have my data has not been refreshed. Last refresh was six minutes ago. So the old data as of six minutes ago and my new changes are merged together. Synchronization actually did some additional work there. Not only it inserted data into a real database, so let's see that. Let's go to suppliers. Here's our product A, supplier A rather, with all the products. Here's our categories uh, and category called C1. And if you go to products, you will find the P1 and P2 and P3 there in the list. All right. So, uh, so synchronization, uh, well, inserted transactions into the app, uploaded the uh, uh, database, uploaded all the records, resolved primary keys, and actually returned primary keys back to my application. Uh, one thing here is to notice is that, that actually, if I make a change to any of the suppliers in the online app, 
then the offline user will not know that I have them, right? If I go here, save, and return back to the Cloud on Time version of the app, this is a separate set of data. I click on suppliers, I do see A, but I do not see this particular record here. So if I were to take out my supplier data and uh, you know save it, the online user wouldn't see this change, right? The online user can still see P1, P2, P3, but the end, but the offline user cannot see an asterisk assigned to the a second supplier. So if I say upload again and say that I'd like to synchronize right after the data was changed, then both law online client and offline client will have the same set of data. Let's see what happens now. So changes uploaded. If there are no problems, you will get full upload started. Uh, your full downloading started and you'll get a fresh set of information. Hello with any changes to your app. You may be asking yourself, all right, that looks great. But what if not all users of my application require offline access? How do I get it done? Let me briefly demonstrate to you this capability. So you see now that I have my A up. So from my perspective, everything is the same. But I do see now the two additional characters in the name of the company for the second supplier. Uh, go back to your online version. Click on A. And there are no products anymore. So I don't know that users change this, this information yet. So for me, doing your uploading will perform without refresh, will push my change to the, to the server, and the online users will see it right away. And at this point in time, I refresh, I see that the asterisk are gone. From my perspective, product customer uh, supplier is still there. OK. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like, I'd like to demonstrate how, what happens when you have a group of users who need to access your app online, and maybe a small group of people who need to travel, who need to go to underground, you know, climb the trees or fly in a plane. Uh, only a small group of people will need to access your app in the offline mode. So how do you do that? So this is how you make it, you could, you could approach this. First of all, go to the roles. And we'll create a couple of roles here. One role we'll call offline users. OK. And uh, well, let's have a group of users who will have access to live data. We'll call those users managers, inventory managers. We'll switch back to users. And we'll create two more users. One user I'll call offline one. And we'll call that user, we'll give a user a password, user123, okay, let me just like, type it again, user123%, user123%. And this user will have a role, offline user, and user's role. And let me put some generic information here, save. Next, I'll create the user called manager1, and the password will be user123%, user123%. And this user will also be a user and a manager. Put here M M M safe. Now I'll go back to current time and we'll reconfigure my application. We'll click design uh, in the project configuration and we'll create an extra page for myself. We'll call it dashboard. On this page, I will place Suppliers data controller. I will click controllers. We'll right click suppliers, say copy, go back to, to pages and paste it in. All right, there you go. For this page, I will indicate that only users with the role managers are allowed to access the page. Uh, asterisk indicate that any authenticated user can access the page. I will change that, managers. For the products page, which is offline, I will say that only users with the role uh, offline users are authorized to access this page. And we'll repeat this exercise for categories, offline users, and suppliers. Offline users. OK. 
Now I'll say run. My application will come up uh, in a cloud on time app, and what you will see is not exactly what I did, right? I have a dashboard page. Uh, administrator is not uh, the offline user that I expected to be. And uh, the reason why is because when you work in an offline mode, the application never tries to see if there are any changes in your app. The only time an offline user will discover that there are changes is when they do a full synchronization. So that means if you go and work in the field and you upload transactions only and do not refresh your app, you will be working with the old version of the app. So let's do the full refresh. We'll click refresh and let's see what happens. When I click refresh and I don't have any changes, the only option I have is to basically get the fresh copy of data and application. So first you get application, then you get data. So let's see what happens now. Application performs full synchronization and automatically turns off offline mode for me. The only pages, pages I have access to as an administrator are home. All users have access. All authenticated users have access to home. And I have access to membership. Yeah, I can see my, my users here and roles. So I'm admin now. I don't need offline access to the data. The default user account called user will be giving us this kind of view of data. All right, let's take a look. I can only see the home page. There is nothing else there. If I sign in into this app and add another account, and call, and this account will be uh, manager one, user one, two, three, percent, login. Application signs in, and I can access now dashboard. I don't have access to membership, but I do see dashboard. Dashboard gives me a view of suppliers. I click on any supplier, and yeah, I can see my data. Notice that supplier, I'm sorry, the, the, the manager one does not have transactional data input facility. So I have pass through input. Uh, how so? Well, if I create a new supplier, I don't see products right away displayed to me here. To make, uh, so as you remember, the offline pages of my app were giving me transactional data input. And to make it possible to, to do transactional data input for users on your online pages, uh, you can do that uh, by enabling uh, a global setting in your app. So click on up and click and activate Visual Studio here. Visual Studio comes up and I'll go ahead and uh, select solution. Open up app folder and scroll down to touch settings JSON file. This file is blank. There's nothing there. Type up ODP, put color brackets and say enabled true. So what it means is you are enabling offline data processor in your app. And if it's enabled, then any form that has child data view fields will automatically activate transactional data input. The page will not be offline, but it will work in a mode similar to the offline. To close Visual Studio, save this file, say run. And now your uh, manager will be able to input data along you know, suppliers along with products. I can create some products here and have this data either saved or canceled if I choose so. I will cancel in this case my changes. So we have tried admin, user. What about this offline guy? So the new guy. So the only guy who in our application, the only user out of the three users that we have who will have true offline access to data. So let's try that. So click add account and say, sign in so if the guy if you sign in on your in cloud on time app into your uh, online application as offline one user one two three percent and click login you'll see how cloud on time activates um, uh, uh, and offline sync activates right after application is refreshed and the data is downloaded so now i have four accounts for the same app one of them shows me offline data the other three give me, gives me gives me various give me various views of my online data. Uh, here's my cloud icon. So that basically concludes my, my presentation. Uh, I hope you like what you've seen. Uh, please like our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have more videos coming up soon. In the very next video, I will be discussing how we write code. So far, we've done nothing. We created a single application which works both online and offline. And uh, what I'd like to do, I'd like us to write um, a voice form that will help us to 
input data. So stay tuned. You, this video is coming up next. Thank you so much.